G'day folks. This uh, demonstrate this device. It's a keyboard app. Dynamic landing drive. Very nice app. I cleared it all up and came out quite well. Very nice amplifier. Let's test it. I'm going to play some NCS. I want to push these speakers too hard, though. Made a little bit of a hum with a magnetic uh, inrush of the transformer. That sounded kind of cool. Like that metal really sounded cool. There we go. I picked up the signal. Yep. Basically, that's the wait for a signal. That's the only, um, because it came with a separate cup. These amplifiers come with a separate fiat unit with all the, uh, as I said before, got your adjustments on it, your um, entire controls and your volume and everything. That unit normally has signal go into this all the time, even at low volumes, to uh, keep this at a standby because I haven't got that unit. This is going to turn off. But well, there's a bit of, bit of a delay before it picks up the audio and it turns the speakers on. So that's the only drawback you get with something like that. You've never got the other unit to go with it. It's got that um, speaker wheel that comes on with a bit of a delay. Damn, was that loud? It's an NCS play in there. and chip that flat out. Calibration. I don't, actually, no, not poor calibration. I um, I realised later on I had a crappy uh, auxiliary cable, and the right, the left channel was not very loud compared to the right. So some of these NCS tapes are a bit out of balance on the stereo signal because I use a crappy um, cheap Chinese audio audio cable. Although it was an all right brand, but seems you can't get decent bloody auxiliary cable nowadays. Or well, line-in cables. So you're going to wait for the speaker to turn on. There we go. That's how that app works. You can see more, well, can see more bass excursion on this speaker than this one. That's why it's also important to calibrate your tape and tape deck when you're making a really good recording. But there's just an um, demo tape for NCS video music on it for um, YouTube videos. It's not the uh, amplifier, it's just the way I record the tape for that crappy aux cable. Nice sounding speakers, though. They're quite like these speakers. Maybe I should try my coral. Pop a coral speakers into this, so let me loud. Maybe I'll try my coral speakers. That'll give the house a bit of a thump and a shake. <laughs> Let's try them. Okay, viewers, well, I've got this boom box here instead. Haven't you just one in a while? That big hum in the last shot for the transformer. Right. Wait for it. Now we haven't got the speaker button selected right. Better check got the right speakers turned on. I should have turned on by now. Yeah? Oh, duh, I've got to turn speakers B on. I've got to wire speakers B this time. 
That sounds better. Let's just put it in a continuous signal, see? And the amp always stays on. That's good. I can monitor my volume. and treble max there, but I don't plug this thing loud in with these speakers, the internal ones. Normally I leave my bass and treble equalizer on max. That's only when I have it on low volume, so it doesn't matter. But normally you wouldn't have everything up maxed out when you've got loud music. It just doesn't sound good anyway. That's just me. I like turning all my equalizer up flat out, but without low volume. I'm not tired for that yet, but that's alright. These uh, sharp beam has got the pretty best cassette deck you get in the beam box in this. That's right, go to the end. Sometimes it always stops, there you go. I've got to use it again, I haven't used it in a while. I might try a quick record, but I won't play too much of that. I can't seem to get access to the um, preamp, or the, I can, but on the board in here. For some reason, both these cartridges are playing at low level. I know that one there used to be normal, and that one there was a quiet one, but now they're both playing at the same quiet level. I've got to turn up to about 7 on the normal speakers to hear it normally. So there's something with the preamp on this uh, record player. The preamp's got something wrong with it, I think. I can't seem to, um... I can't see a reason, any reason why both those cartridges would stuff up at once. We've both got near, near needle, a matching uh, needle for that one, so... Let's get a record. Do a quick play. Being memories from when you were three. We'll talk to you next. See you again. Well, um, I'm not sure what's going on here, but... I can't get the turn type of working. It clicks all right. That seems normal. But it just doesn't want to turn. Put a record and it doesn't work anymore. That's odd. I didn't use it in a long time. Maybe capacitors on the way out or something. Let me go get a record. That's odd. I had a good look inside. Couldn't see any wires damage or any damage to the circuit, but that's odd. It's got me buggered. All of a sudden it's not working. You said they haven't used it in bloody six months. Hmm. I wonder if that's capacitors, maybe. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. It does need a bit more work to get this uh, lit turn cover going again. Like reliably, that is. Normally it would start spinning as soon as I select photo. It would start spinning. You hear a click with the solenoids, but it's not doing anything now. Nothing. Dead. Change size, change speeds, press repeat, those all work, the lights all work. That works. I can manually cue the motor, or the heads. And it should stop at the 17 for the 45. Let's see if it does. That works, but every other function don't. Press play, nothing happens. Cue the needle, nothing happens. What's going on? What's going on there? Hmm, so I need more restoration work. What a sod. I was really hoping this would work. It died. Hmm. It's maybe a challenge to get that board done. Well, I got the service manual to it, but. I have to take that turntable out and have a look at that circuit board. It's not working properly. I'll maybe check all the capacitors on it. That's a bit of a bug. I was looking forward to demonstrating the, uh, the record player on this. Doesn't work. What a bugger. 
Play with the switch in the bottom. I'll play with the switch in the bottom. I'll try that actually. Let's put the left foot back in and play with the switch in the bottom of the foot. I'm supposed to turn the turntable off when it gets moved around. All right, I'll just have the little camera on here. Look at a part of the boom box there. I'll tilt it. Play with that switch. Go to move the head. It's moving. Play with the switch. It's not responding. Hmm. Switch is not doing anything. Maybe it didn't pull it together right. I don't know how to click of the mark by switching that foot. Maybe the foot the switch in there. Maybe the switch in the foot's faulty. There's a um little switch under one of the feet here. You should have a little micro switch click, but I'm not hearing that. Maybe it's dislodged. I need to put it back together properly. It might have dislodged. That could be what it is. And that's come disconnected or dislodged, so it's not the lever's not hitting the button there. The mechanical button the foot's working, but it's not um, actuating the micro switch behind it next to it. So maybe that have to be uh, investigated. But it sounds like that's what it is. I should hear a little. It's like a mouse click sort of a micro switch sound, but I'm not hearing that. So there must be, um, I must have uh, bumped it or dislodged it when I put it back together last. The last major work I've done, I think, was a, um, I don't know how to, I, did, I remember doing, uh, oh, fixing the tape deck. Oh, I did the belts before that, and I took it apart again to do the, uh, the idler, the idler tire stuff up again. That's to the take up. That's right, and I put it back together. I um, didn't check if the record player was working again after that, and uh, that switch might have come and possibly dislodged again, so that'll explain it. That click. I love that click. Thanks for watching.